Welcome back to Techno Babylon. We've arrived at Xanadu Air Force Base. And to be completely honest, I don't actually remember why I'm here. But I guess that'll probably become pretty obvious soon. Still got the injector, I've got a crowbar. Well, looks like I might have to do some breaking and entering. But I've got a crowbar, so we should have that handled. That aircon's putting out a lot of heat. Must be working pretty hard in this weather. Through the window, you see a man who looks too well armed to be working at a front desk. Closer than that is his mug of coffee. I wondered what that was. Huh. I thought this place maybe was kind of shut down. Because there's like a hole in the window here and graffiti everywhere. But yeah, I guess the lights are on. There's somebody inside. Is this airbase actually still functioning? I guess so. An aerostat is tethered to the landing field. Through the fence, you can see dock workers loading crates of cargo. Yeah, I guess it is operating. I can't reach it from here. <laughs> it's only like 500 feet away. Almost. Maybe if I use the crowbar. Nah. Through the damage, you can make out an itinerary some long-expired special offers, and a message where somebody's hacked the text to display rude ASCII drawings. Out of all the things I can change in the future, ASCII dicks are not one of them. They will always exist. Hmm. Can I break this further? There's only so much you can do with a crowbar. Uh, breaking a window is one of those things, though. But yeah, there's no reason to. Oh. I thought I was... I just assumed I was sneaking around this place, but given that I just walked inside, I guess I'm supposed to be here. I really don't remember why I'm here. Though you're not very worldly, you're pretty sure that this man is much more imposing than someone who'd normally be working the desk at an air freight firm. Hello? Not much of a conversationalist, huh? Can I just... No, go away. You don't even... No, it's too hot to argue. <laughs> Maybe you should stop drinking coffee. I don't think that's helping things. Can't I... Get out of here, thrall. Can't I... Get out of here. Hmm. A painting of a turn-of-the-century antique fighter jet from the days when they still used human pilots for the role. It's a warm night. With all that armor, it's no wonder he needs the aircon. Do I have to cool him down to be able to talk with him? Is he just not willing to talk with me because it's too hot? Is that actually the puzzle I have to solve? I think it is. It's locked. I figured that huge keypad's got something to do with it. Well, I could probably try to hack it, but there's no point with the agent standing there, right? Hey, authorized personnel only. Yeah. I didn't think so. A map of the world showing destinations serviced by Xanadu Air Freight. Or at least they used to be. Hey, be it for all. Apparently the man at the desk is making up for the chill of the air conditioner with a mug of something hot. Or maybe we don't need to make it cold, but rather we need to wreck the air conditioner so that it gets so hot that he can't stand it, and comes out to try to fix it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, damn it. Why did it have to break tonight? Can't I? Get out of here, thrall. Or... Instead, maybe that doesn't do anything. Hmm. All this vandalism. Maybe people are right. Perhaps too much trancing really is warping my morals and principles. Man, I can't wait to get back in the trance. 
Maybe I can connect with the aircon and try to make it extra hot or extra cold, but the thing is I just broke it, so <laughs> can I really do that? The wetware won't form a connection with it. Nope. Hmm. All this vandalism. Man, I can't wait. Oh wait, there's another air conditioner? There's two air conditioners. All this van Man. Can I break that one too? Wait, what? Oh. That's weird, even though the air conditioners are considered separate hotspots. It looks like if you use the top one, it does the same thing as if you use the bottom one. Can I really still not talk with you? Can't I? Get out of here. A hypodermic injector gun still holding a few milliliters of powerful anesthetic. Hmm. Can I put that into your mug when you're not looking? Hey, hands off my coffee. <sighs> Real subtle. Can I inject you? When you go to take a sip, is this a timed thing? Let's wait for him to take a sip. Sure, there we go. I feel like getting myself shot. Oh. What in the heck am I supposed to do? I thought breaking the air conditioner would make him go outside to try to fix it, but it didn't do anything. I think I do need to poison his cup of coffee, but to do that, I, I need an opening, and I don't have one. I can reach it, but he'd notice pretty quickly if I just took it. Wait, you can reach it? Are you telling me there's... I thought this was a window. Is this not a window? Is this open? Can I just reach in and do it from... do it from here? What? Taking care to ensure the guard doesn't see, you squeeze a few drops of tranquilizer from the injector into the coffee. You're telling me that's not a window? Okay. I just, I mean, I assumed that was a window, because obviously there's supposed to be a window there. I guess the window's missing for some reason, because of vandalism or something perhaps, but... Or is it open? Is the window open? But why would the window be open if the air conditioner was on? Or did he open the window because the air conditioner is broken and I just didn't notice? I don't, I'm gonna have to go back and actually watch the video to figure out what happened there. Maybe he opened the window because the air conditioner was broken, but did I ever actually see that? Was there any indication of that happening? I'm so confused, but regardless, the puzzle solved, so... Okay. Hello? Guess that tranquilizer did its job. Cargo Manifest. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of things here. And then wait, revert from backup, containers. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to do anything with these yet, because I have no idea what to do. Alright, let's try to hack this thing. Try as you might, you can't find any systems on it that appear new enough to accept a wetware bond. That'd make their security system at least... Mm, 20 years old, you reckon? I don't need to hack it. He didn't log out. I don't know how. Can I hack the map? The wetware won't form... I don't... Oh, looks like I can connect to him. It's amazing how many people don't put enough security on their Gibsons. They assume they've got enough willpower to stop intruders on their own. Let's just try to wet wear everything in case it's actually wet wearable. Like, what about this mug? Nah, I don't want it now that I know what's in it. What about the air conditioner? No. The wet won't form a con- 
The door. The wetware won't fall. The floor. Oh, I guess I can contact Jelia whenever I want. Salam, Mandela. Hi. I'm finally at the site. You were right. I can feel the connection. That is good to hear. You managed to avoid detection in your journey? Yeah, nobody noticed me. Just some thrall wandering the southwest city. Yes, please remind me, what am I doing here? What is it you need me to do here? We have the ID for their system, but are unable to access it. You must get close enough to it to act as a relay point. Then your tech teams break into it and find out what their plans are? Exactly. Ah, gotcha. That's right, I'm super good at relaying information. Like, one of the... One of the best transfers in the world, basically. Just in terms of the raw amount of data that I can process, if I remember right. I can sense the signal you've mentioned. I've got a visual representation in my trance hub. Good. You'll know how close you are to your goal. If they're trying to hide, why are they broadcasting like this? Like much of hacking, we must look for mistakes our target makes. What you sense is not intentional on their part. Oh, so it's seepage? Like inter-system connections they haven't noticed? Precisely. Many of their own devices communicate wirelessly. Their attempt at security involves limiting the range. They therefore avoid attacks from the net at large. But if you can get a relay close enough... Then we may study their signal as though we were by your side. So, the people trying to kill me are working out of an old aerodrome? Quite so. This air freight business collapsed last year. We suspect it was bought up as a front for this criminal enterprise. They're storing their data systems in the aerostat? Why don't they just split it up and hide it in the trance? Physical security is as much a concern for admins as system integrity. If they suspect someone of getting too close... They can just take off. Huh. What is your breaching team going to do? When I reach the systems, I mean. We aim to rip their memory drives. Cloning them onto another system allows us to perform more destructive analytics. Plus, the process would wreck their whole system as well. Better hope they haven't got any people connected to the system. Anyone wired is going to find their brains fried and stored in a mem capsule. Of course, before this takes place, we will secure a back door to the system. That way, we will not depend on you as a relay. You will therefore be able to escape once this has been accomplished. I'll get back to you. Good luck. Now, let's see if this person has the password to the keypad stored on them. Uh, where am I? How did I even get here? And by stored on them, I guess I mean let's see if I can talk my way into them giving me the password. You are on a beach. Don't you remember? You're at the beach. Uh, this is nice. You're relaxed, aren't you? I am, yeah. This place is nice. You're comfortable with telling me your secrets, aren't you? Anything you want to share? You know, Ethan got himself killed on that botched factory raid. I'm not going to his funeral. And even though I didn't like him, it's making me really guilty. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try a different approach. The guy they've got filling your job while you're here on vacation. He can't do the job without the access code. That's not my problem. Oh, but they'll think it is. They'll say you didn't set him up properly. Ah, uh, you're right. Tell me what the access code is. I'll take it to him. Uh, sure. It's 44138. Wait, this doesn't make sense. Dreams usually don't, do they? There we go. 44138. Okay, I should probably make a save here, because I'm guessing there's a chance that a guard could see me and maybe shoot me. Large cargo container waiting to be loaded onto the aerostat. This screen shows the weight on the reassuring plat- reassuring, on the measuring platform in front of it. Apparently it's holding 51 kilograms at the moment. 
Okay, so I think I need to weigh this crate, don't I? Oh. I'm going to have to add up, like, my weight plus the weight of any extra cargo, maybe. Something like that. Because it changes when I walk onto it to account for my weight. Okay, well. 51 goes up to 96. So, 96 minus 51 equals 6, 7, 8, 9. That equals 45. So, she weighs 45 kilograms. Yeah, 45 kilograms. Probably going to be important information. Can I push this thing over? Or, oh, I need to hide inside of it. Now we just wait and... All right, let's get it loaded. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you know how bitchy the dock gets waiting. Hang on, hang on. The measurement's all wrong. Yeah, I didn't change what? anything. This is not good. Daddy must have screwed it up. The manifest says it should be showing lighter. Ugh, idiot. Send it back and get him to recheck the weights. Okay, so, uh, this is crate A121, and we need to add 45 kilograms to its weight. Let's go do that. A121. There it is. Net weight 30 kilograms. Um... How does this work? Oh. Oh, yeah, just add to it. Okay. So, 30 kilograms. Let's add 45 to that. That would be 5, 6, 75 kilograms. And that should do it. Here we go again. Come on, Let's fingers see crossed. He's got it right this time. Okay, weight's looking good. Try the scanner. Scan so organic. Same as the manifest. Fantastic. Get it aboard. Creasel and the doc want to cast off. The Sweet, signal's we did going it. crazy. I must be on top of. Hmm? Huh? What? Uh, why am I back home? Hmm? The simulations exceeded its buffer. Took her long enough. I think Jinsel did a pretty good job on that one. Why'd you have to get someone like Jinsel involved in it, though? Because when I asked you to do it, you apparently couldn't keep your thirst for revenge in check. Or should I say Baxter's thirst for revenge? Huh. I don't see why you store the targets in your own wiring. It's obviously not good for you. It's more secure. Ah, I suppose Jinsel did their job. Got her to walk right in the front door. Even packaged and delivered herself. Ha! We have some big plans for you, sister. It was a trap. This is the place. The whole damn thing was a trap. But maybe, since Regis is just coming here right now, maybe it's not too late and we can stop it. Yeah, guard's still asleep. Apparently, the heavies that came after you in the factory are working here as well. Though a good sign that you're on the right track, the fact that someone's already knocked this one out concerns you. Oh, look at tiny Regis. Look at me so small. Baby Regis. You're so cute. 
After being moved from the hangar, it looks like the crates are sealed for transit. You can't find a way into these ones. What do I have on me? Jolt gun? Just a jolt gun and the traveler, okay. The aerostat hangs a meter from the ground, ready to break free from the earth once its cables are released. This is apparently where they're hiding. Okay, definitely time to save. Should be able to just jilt you. Damn, it's out of charge. Oh, crap. Hmm. In that case... Well, shit, in that case, what? Do I knock you out or just avoid you? Can I just, like, punch you in the back I of the head? I can't reach him from up here. Plus, I don't like my odds against him. Yeah, fair enough. Use the console? Better do it fast, man! Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that'd work. The conspicuously large hatch in the floor is apparently how crates are lifted into the cargo bay. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what to do. I need to make him fall. Wait until he's over here, and then... And then use it. Fast! Oh. Oh, I can just walk behind the crates. Well, problem solved. Please fall now, thank you. Goodbye. One of the security staff has apparently forgotten to collect a set of thermal imaging goggles. Thermoptic goggles. Same ones I've seen the strike team using. Shows heat sources as an image. Cool. Okay, so I can't use them while moving. Yes, there's a junction point here. I guess that's going to come in handy for something. You remember seeing a hotspot through thermal vision underneath here? What do I look like? A mechanic? That's what I've got Lao for. Yeah, well, Lao isn't here right now. The sign by the door tells you that this is a multi-purpose room, likely re-equipped from job to job depending on the needs of a client. From the smell and the surgical lamps you can see through the window, it appears to be fitted as a sick bay. Oh, that's where she's being Stop held. Stop squirming, will you? That operator will shoot me down the moment I open the door. Yeah, I've got to find another way in. Or a weapon or something. Someone working aboard the Aerostat has apparently forgotten to shut down their terminal after using it. You wonder how someone forgets something so basic these days, especially after all the informative cartoons in school. It's locked with a password. How quaint. It will still need to be breached before the terminal can be accessed. Hmm. The hatch has been locked from the other side. Wait, so what the heck am I supposed to do? Some more hotspots there, there, and there. What do I look like? That's what I've got loud. Okay, but again, <laughs> Lao is not here, is she? What do I look? That's what I've got. What do I look? That's what I. So we can't do anything with the hotspots. What do I look? That's what. All right, let's call Lao then, I guess. Lao, you there? Standing by and waiting for your signal. You remember the plan. Don't worry about me. You just be careful. Don't do anything stupid. need Lao to do stuff with those junctions, but talking to Lao does nothing. Hmm. I don't get it. Let's see if there's anything fancy in this room. 
Wait, what the hell is that? The thinness of the steel wall has allowed the thermal outline of the hired heavy to be visible from this side. Thermoptic goggle. Huh. Okay. Uh, what can I do with that, though? I don't have any weapon. I don't see how that helps. Should I go collect a weapon from the person who fell through the hatch? Let's go outside and see. See if their body's there. I don't see a body. Oh, I think this is what I missed. Apparently these... background looking, barely perceptible bumps in the wall are actually lockers. I bet there's something I need inside of those. Bolt gun. It's no wonder this aerostat's such a heap. They've almost run out of maintenance supplies. More so now that you've helped yourself. Yeah, I can barely even see those. Th those don't stand out at, at all. Jesus. Uh. An industrial rivet gun uses compressed air to punch finger-length bolts through metal surfaces. I wonder if they ever have to use this from the outside while in flight. Okay, so that is probably what's used on the guard from the other side of the wall over here. Gonna kill him through the wall, I guess. Ugh. Ah! That's a nasty surprise. Ah! I, uh, thank God you're here! Who are you? Y y you've gotta get me out of here! They kidnapped me two weeks ago! No, they didn't. I've been forced to conduct research for them in this aerostat. Research? What kind of research? Human experimentation. This poor girl. You see that hardware in the corner? What the hell did you... Ugh. The upper level is clear, but I... Oh. Huh. Gave him a shot in the back. Your problem is, you overcomplicate things. Still conscious? That's how the wetware works. You can't rip his memory, though. He isn't wired. I am aware, Ms. Vargas. Take his weapon. This is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. Ugh! No, you haven't. Baxter was looking forward to it. <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you. It's quite a powerful paralytic, isn't it? An unfortunate yet necessary part of our mutual friend here's role. My targets have to be conscious when I pull the contents of their minds. I'd love to rip the Regis clean out of your head as well. I told you, he's not wired. I know, but I know what'll really get to him. What's this? An embryo? Oh god. It's rather a contentious issue for us, isn't it? Rather a bit of history between us over these little things. Oops. Fragile things, the unborn. Don't worry. Plenty more where that came from. I think... This one is going to grow up to be a great success. World leader, Nobel laureate, maybe follow in their father's footsteps. Oops, all gone. Vicky would be so proud, wouldn't she? Kressel. After all, you showed her how important those things were. More than anything else in the world, apparently. Baxter! You seriously need professional help. Huh. Should have known she'd still be after her partner. Commander, prepare to weigh anchor. Kressel, deal with our new cell intruder. Then resolve whatever issues you have with Dr. Regis. With pleasure. Don't go anywhere. So that's Baxter. How? What? Go! 
gotcha. <laughs> wow, nice throw, Chantel. Did I do good, Dr. Max? You did great. I'd better find where Regis went. <laughs> she reprogrammed the maid. Lao reprogrammed her. Oh my god. You're a lot stronger than you look. Not hurting him too much, are you? He technically has rights. I'm only applying 55 kilopascals of pressure on his upper thorax. It'd take at least another 10 to pose a threat to his long-term viability. Hmm. Raise it another three, then. Okie dokie! <laughs> hey, stop! What the hell's going on in here? Regis! Regis, can you hear me? <clears throat> Better figure out how to fix you. She's out of it. Well, I've got an injector, so I'm guessing I need some drugs. Well, if he's been paralyzed, I think a big dose of caffeine should wake his muscles up. I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure. A large terminal connected to both a cradle for the memory module and the bed. Looks like it's still running a trance simulation. On the body, you find his unusable weapon and the communication gear hooked into his neural wiring. This man's apparently taken several industrial rivets to the back. You're not sure you want to imagine the circumstances that led Regis to this. The use of a Whatware-based incapacitating agent has proven fortuitous to the cause of his to the course of his work. Mr. Creasel has found the 414B Whatware to be effective at subduing the targets while retaining consciousness, but also acts as a primer for the extraction process. The choice of Whatware, rather than a conventional chemical paralytic, also enables a much less precise delivery vector, suitable for covert work. The only downside thus far has been 414B's susceptibility to wetware's inherent weaknesses, temperature, bodily rejection. Temperature, huh? Hmm. I've got my own. Regis's wouldn't work for me anyway. They're signature weapons. So, do I need to heat up Regis's body or something? Regis, can you hear me? <clears throat> Better figure out how to fix you. And what about those goggles? Can I pick them up? Are they around here? I only see Regis's stunner. The goggles must still be on him, but I can't seem to get them from him. So I guess I can't take them. Locked. Apparently this terminal will take a little breaking before it reveals its secrets to you. So this is the, like, memory simulation that that thing is running? Yeah, so we thought this was Baxter. But apparently this person is Baxter, according to that woman that ran off. She called him Baxter. Did he somehow transfer his consciousness to a different body and fake his own death? Well, sort of fake his own death. I mean, he did kill his actual body, I suppose. So it's kind of not fake, but it seems like his consciousness has been transferred. He certainly looks like Dr. Baxter, according to the background reports you were given. Excuse me? Hello there. Who are you? Allow me to introduce myself, my dear. My name is Dr. Baxter. I operate the cataloging station. Baxter? Dr. Adam Baxter? I believe so, yes. Excuse me if this sounds a little rude, but aren't you dead? How do you mean? Well, yesterday I was probing your well-preserved remains at a crime scene. Oh, yes. You're quite right. I was killed, wasn't I? It's strange, because I could have sworn I was the one doing it. Not the blonde man? The mindjacker? It was definitely him, no doubt about it. One can't exactly commit suicide with a hammer, can they? I'm aware that I was murdered, but I have a surprisingly vivid memory. 
you remember being murdered? Not precisely. It's as though it were an out-of-body experience. I have memory of watching the hammer striking from above. My hands, his hands, so bloody. It's all very peculiar, isn't it? And you see no difficulty between being dead and talking to me. That is most odd. Do you know a Dr. Regis? I know two, in fact. Charles and Viksha. Hmm. I killed Viksha, didn't I? So I've heard. It's very peculiar. I remember that I did it, but I can't recall the deed, nor my feelings on the matter. You feel nothing? I know I ought to. An act such as that would be emotionally weighty, but all that remains is an absence. Do give my regards to Charles if you see him, though. Can you remember who killed you? It was the blonde gentleman, wasn't it? Though I can recall it in the first person, I'm certain it was him. How so? He was my only company in the room, and I do not recognize him. I also realize how absurd the idea of my having committed this murder would be. Do you know why he murdered you? At first, I don't believe it was to have been a murder. This gentleman had larceny in mind. I recall his feelings of... Mind jacket. He was stealing the contents of your neural wiring. Your brain. Quite so. I was, after all, a leader in my field in the day. And while my memory was doubtless useful to him, he found something unexpected. A well of motivation, suppressed by years of therapy and technological intervention. Your anger against Regis. He took my mind. No doubt he acquired that as well. How do you feel about Dr. Regis? Charles Regis? I feel nothing, particularly. I regret his decision to remove the embryos from the program, but... Nothing else? No anger? No revenge? None at all. Maybe it's the influence of the neural governor on your behavior. By no means. The weight of that cruel apparatus has been lifted. I guess because you're no longer attached to it. And yet, I feel nothing that would warrant it. Why would anyone want to keep that part of your mind? What use would someone have for your desire for revenge? Perhaps it isn't a matter of his need as the desire's need. Though suppressed by the governor, my thoughts on the matter were all-consuming. Now they have found a conduit through which they may act. The mind jacker isn't in as much control as he'd like to think then. This might sound like a really stupid question, but what's death like? Hmm. I can see why this would be a useful matter for scientific curiosity. In my case, I'm afraid it's probably not representative. After all, can I really be said to be dead when my memory, my consciousness, lives on? I suppose all you could remember would be the physical destruction of yourself. And that, most assuredly, was a great discomfort. Thanks for the help. You are most welcome, my dear. So the Mindjacker stole Baxter's, well, mind, basically, and is now unfettered by the Neural Governor or anything like that, and is free to carry out Baxter's former murderous intents, I think. Even if it weren't for the fact you'd stored the image in your wiring, you'd remember this face anywhere after his escape at Animus. For a man about to pulverize someone's head with a claw hammer, he looks remarkably cool and confident, as though this is just a step in a larger plan. Dr. Baxter's body sits slumped in its chair, apparently the recent victim of a mindjacking attack. He looks a lot more complete than when you last saw him, though. Wait, just to be sure, I can't, like, use the wetware on the mind Wetware's jacket, not I? going to connect. Wet, wetware, wet. I think I'm done here. I think so.
Oh, my head. Thanks, Max. Great job saving my ass and everything. Yeah, and sticking me with an injector. You suddenly a medic? Just a lucky hunch. You going to fill me in on what's going on here? Later. Update me on the immediate situation first. Well, the bad news is I saw someone escape through the hatch at the top of that ladder. Damn. It sounded like she was one of the ringleaders of this plan. On the other hand, our newest recruit just made her first caller. New recruit. Oh yeah, you're going to love this. Ugh, damn it, I don't believe it! It ran out of charge again, didn't it? She must have overexerted herself. Damn it! I had him right here! Whoa, what's happening? So, by the way, just to fill you in, it looks like I just already had the stuff in Lau's injector to wake him up. The aerostat's taking off! Where are they taking it? It doesn't matter. Wherever it is, we... need. You alright, Charlie? I'm not sure how much of that stuff I was supposed to give you. I'll be... fine. You're in no fit state for any more trouble. Stay down here, try and figure out what they're doing with the girl. I'll find a way to the upper deck. Yeah, I just, like, I assumed I needed to fill my injector up with the right stuff to wake him up. But, apparently it was already filled with it? I don't even remember doing that. I don't know if that's something I did and just don't remember. Or if it's just... She thought it might come in handy and kept it with her. But, yeah, I just needed to use the injector on him and it was already all done. Ah, poor Chantel. Chantel? Damn! I'll see if I can get her up and running again once this is all resolved. I wonder why Lau didn't, like, put handcuffs around the guy or something. Seems like that would have been a good idea. Hmm. Anyway, alright, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm gonna do some MacGyverisms to hopefully stop the Mindjacker. <laughs>